Hey, what's up, people? This is Kevin Wright. Just giving you a shout out here. And real quick, this is going to be a real short video. I plan on doing more and expanding out some, but for right now, I just want to keep this short and simple and just say, hey, God bless you. Thank you for watching. Those of you who will be watching, thank you for watching. It's the first day of March 2011. I'm thankful because this is my birth month. 11 days to be exact, we'll be celebrating. My birthday on March the 12th, and I know a few of you already out here watching have a birthday. Some of you today, some of you coming up. So happy birthday to all the March babies. Thank the Lord he allows all to be here. Thank the Lord that he's using us to impact his kingdom. And one thing I'm going to say real quickly before I get off of here is look at how easy it is to get on here and to do a video like this. I mean, we have all types of equipment now. We didn't got all sophisticated. We need to use the sophisticated technology that is being presented in front of us to really learn how to make kingdom impact. I remember exactly a month ago today, I was on a conference phone call with Dan and Martha Mudizzi, and they made a comment about how we need to really, Martha actually, she's the one who made the comment more specifically about how it's going to take some disciplined, creative Christians to really get out here and just to really be creative with the stuff we've been given to really use what we have and to make a genuine impact for the kingdom of God, doing God's thing, doing it God's way, and just really going all out. I mean, because that's what's about these last days. I mean, I don't know about you, but we've got a lot of stuff in this country. As Americans, as Christians living in America, we have a lot of stuff we have to deal with. There's a lot of stuff going on and it's a lot more subtle because we're not being persecuted, we're not being run out of our homes, we're not being shot down and things of that nature, but we have a lot dealing with media, we have a lot going on in culture, we have a lot going on, and I'll be honest, I'll say it like this because you can just tell from a lot of the trends of what's going on within the body of Christ, a lot of American Christians are just flat out bored. And it's not that God's not doing his part, it's that we really don't understand a lot of times just the value of really spending time in his face. It reminds me a little bit of what the Apostle Paul was saying in Philippians. I was looking through that this morning and it's just crazy because, you know, there's just so much stuff in the Word, so many jewels, so much wisdom, so much everything that God gives in his Word. So give me a second here, I'm going to turn to it, and I'm going to share a portion of it that really stuck out in this part, and this is verse 9 of Philippians chapter 1. I pray that your love will overflow more and more, and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding, for I want you to understand what really matters, so that you may live pure and blameless lives till the day of Christ's return. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, the righteous character produced by your life by Jesus Christ. For this will bring much glory and praise to God. Let me correct myself. That last part in verse 11 says, May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ. For this will bring much praise and glory to God. I mean, Living a life, going all out for Christ is what really matters. Living a life, going out for Christ is why we're here. If you don't, why are you going to say you know Christ if you're not going to live all out for him? And that, of course, looks different with each and every single one of us because God's got different callings and God's got different purposes. But no matter what the calling and no matter what his purpose is in our lives as an individual, it all goes back to one purpose which is making him known here in this earth and making him known amongst wherever he's put us. So, I mean, and I'm going to go back to that whole thing about, you know, us Christians being bored because like the Apostle Paul does say here in verse 10, for I want you to understand what really matters so that you may be live pure and blameless lives till the day of Christ's return. In verse 9, he says, I pray to love will overflow more and more, that you'll keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. That's what's not happening. A lot of times, the growing in knowledge and understanding is not taking place. It's not God's fault. We need to be the ones as followers of Christ, truly seeking his face, truly getting his word, 
truly spending time with him, truly allowing him to speak to our lives so that we can truly hear from him. And what he has to say, his word has been given to us. We're in a country where we are free to read his word. And there's a lot of messages being thrown out there to means the media, music, all of the kind of craziness going on. I mean, look at this. This is a video camera. And it's being used in so many different ways. Body of Christ. Let's wake up now. Let's get in God's face and see how we can use these tools to glorify him. So we can show people that we're living a life glorifying Christ, pure and blameless before him, and living a life that really matters. Now, when you get a chance to take a look at Psalms chapter 119, it's 176 verses on, but there's a portion of it that really, really, really sticks out in that portion. I'm going to turn to it really quickly. And I'm going to share just a little bit of that. Psalms 119. Now the portion that I want to get at here is in, I'm going to go with verses 33. I'm going to give a little bit of 32, 30, no, yeah, 31, 32, where he says, this is the Dallas. By the way, just so y'all know, David did not write all the Psalms 119. Matter of fact, he didn't write any of Psalms 119. Psalms 119 was written by his sons of Korah. David is responsible for 73 of the Psalms. This is not one of them. That's just a side note. Just want to make sure y'all understand that. So don't be saying David said this when David didn't. David didn't write this one here. David wrote this song. And it goes in the head in verse 33. But I'm going to end with what David writes. He says, I cling to your laws. Lord, don't let me be put to shame. I will pursue your commands, for you expand my understanding. Teach me your decrees, O Lord. I will keep them to the end. Give me understanding, and I will obey your instructions. I will put them into practice with all my heart. Make me walk along the path of your commands, for there is where my happiness is found. Give me eagerness for your laws, rather than a love for money. Turn my eyes from worthless things, and give me life through your word. Reassure me of your promise, made to me, to those who fear you. Help me abandon my shameful ways for your regulations are good. I long to obey your commandments. Renew my life with your goodness. What really matters? Living life to glorify God. Living life through his word. And using tools such as what we have right here to really make a difference and really make an impact. So I'm going to encourage you. This is the beginning of many more videos and many other things to come. But I just wanted to use this to set it off real quick. So, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Talk to you soon.